Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about aquatic biomes. The Earth is made up of almost 70% water. This water can be divided up into two basic aquatic biomes. They are freshwater, which include rivers and streams, lakes and ponds and wetlands, along with the marine biome, which include the ocean and estuaries. So let's get started with aquatic biomes. Talk about freshwater biomes. The earth has lots of water, but only two and a half percent is freshwater. The major freshwater biomes include ponds, lakes, streams, rivers, and wetlands. Plants and animals in these freshwater biomes are adapted to the low salt content in freshwater and are unable to survive in areas of high salt concentration. Salt water is 30 to 50 parts per thousand salt to water, where fresh water is only 0.5 parts per thousand. Let's take a look at some freshwater biomes. Rivers and streams. The water in rivers and streams flow in one direction beginning at the source called a headwater and traveling to the mouth where the flowing water empties into a larger body. The slope of the landscape determines the direction and speed of the water flow. When the slope is steep, water flows quickly. When it is not as steep, the water slows down. The currents and turbulence of fast-moving rivers and streams prevent much accumulation of organic materials in fast-moving rivers and streams. Lakes and ponds are inland, inland bodies of standing water. It can be as small as a few square meters or as large as a thousand square meters. Some ponds might be filled with water for only a few weeks or months each year where some lakes have existed for hundreds of years. Wetlands are areas such as marshes, swamps, and bogs that are saturated with water and support aquatic plants called wetlands. Plant species that grow in the moist human conditions of wetlands include pond lilies, cattails, and willows. Wetlands have a high level of species diversity. Many amphibians, including duck, excuse me, including salamanders and reptiles and birds, live in the wetlands. So there we go. Freshwater biomes. We have rivers and streams, lakes and ponds, and wetlands. The Earth is roughly 70% water. 97% of this water is composed of our oceans and seas. Let's take a look at the ocean. only experience the ocean from the beach or on the shore. If you go underwater or out into the ocean, you discover that it is overflowing with life.
ocean can be divided into five major oceans. The Pacific, which is the largest, the Atlantic, Indian, Southern, and the Arctic Ocean. And then these oceans can be divide, subdivided into seas. The ocean is teeming with life. It includes animals as large as a 40-foot humpback whale and as small as microscopic plankton. It also includes a huge variety of plants and coral reefs that stretch for miles. It also includes the largest mountain range called the Mid-Ocean Ridge. The ocean impacts our weather and has been used for years as trade routes. We play on the beaches of oceans and wonder what can be found in the deep trenches like the Mariana Trench, which is 32,000 feet deep. Although we're fascinated with the ocean, we've only explored about 5% of the ocean. So there you have a quick overview of our, of our most diverse and largest biome on Earth, Talk about the, the ecosystem ocean. called the estuary. An estuary is a body of water that has fresh water entering and is also open to the ocean. It is semi-enclosed coastal body of water and it's connected to the open sea and also the salt water is diluted when fresh water from land drains into it. Estuaries have been called the nurseries of the sea because they provide a safe environment for fish and birds and other wildlife to raise their young. Estuaries also have producers called phytoplankton which help the food chain and provide food for many of the wildlife. Estuaries also help because they filter sediment and pollutants from the water before it flows into the ocean. Estuaries are also important because they buffer the ocean and the land and they can help decrease the effects of flooding and storm surges. Estuaries can be classified according to their geological features. The classifications include coastal plain estuaries, tectonic estuaries, bar built estuaries, and fjords. Coastal plain estuaries look like valleys with gentle sloping bottoms. Their depth increases towards the river's mouth. This type of estuary is common throughout the world. An example is Tampa Bay in the U.S. Bar-built estuaries are formed when sandbars build up along the coastline and they partially cut off the waters behind them from the sea. Fjord estuaries are narrow with steep sides and are usually straight and long. Fjords are found in areas that have been covered by glaciers. And finally, tectonic estuaries are created when the sea fills in a hole or basin that's formed from sinking land. San Francisco Bay is a good example. So there we go, estuaries, the nurseries of the world, places where fresh and salt water mix together what plant and animals love. Thanks for watching, and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.